I remind you this morning without getting into the details. I am responsible for teaching other people what is acceptable in the way they relate to me. And if we accept that, then I am responsible for the situations in my life. And then there are no justified resentments, no justified anger, animosity, hatred that I should entertain towards other people in my life. In the words in the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, he said it this way. He says, Lord, make me an instrument of thy will. Wherever there is hatred, let me sow. What did he say? Let me sow love. And like this, he is saying, Lord, whenever there is a negative energy coming my way, let me reciprocate with a higher vibration of energy that goes out. And you'll say, Bob, that sounds very ideal. That sounds so perfectionist. But if we are to enjoy that quality or that embodiment that is called love, that God has so sent us into this world to give, then how can we entertain this concept of hate? Remember, in Hindi, in the language Hindi, the word ha, e, ta means love. Very interesting. That you cannot hate someone, H-A-T-E someone, Truly, as a matter of fact, some people say in the romantic language, there's a fine line between love and hate. And why is that? It is because the people that we hurt the most at times are those that are closest to us. The people that we hurt the most at times are those that we love and treasure the most. Because of their proximity, because they are so close to us, they feel the pain, they feel the impact when we lose control of our emotions in haste. And today, I remind you that whenever situations happen to us that we do not enjoy as positive or as uplifting, we need to respond to it by, re by sending back higher levels and vibrational patterns of energy. <coughs> There's a saying that goes, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I remind you this morning, if we treated everybody in the mannerism of an eye for an eye, there will only be blind people walking around in this earth. If we live by the concept that add an eye for an eye, there will be one day to come only blind people walking on this earth. The Chinese had it perfect when they said, if you're about, if your response to someone is going to be revenge, if you are going to pursue revenge, you're better off starting off by digging two graves. So perfect indeed, the Chinese reminded us about the concept of not entertaining justified resentment. Today, as we chant a very beautiful chopai from Tulsidas's Katha, I ask you to please bring to mind, if someone gives you a gift, and I want to say to you, Tika, this is a gift for you this morning. And I give it to Tika. If Tika does not accept that gift, to whom does that gift belong? If I give this gift to you and you say, I don't want it. If I give it to you and you refuse it, to whom does that gift belong? Can anybody answer? It belongs to me. If someone hurls hurtful words, threats, criticism, chastises you, and you refuse to accept it, to whom does that gift belong? With that in mind, I ask you to please join with me as we chant Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram as we invoke the words, the message of Tulsi Maharaj. Kai kai la jaani, 
of Ayodhya Puri. And like this, he is now deciding his method, his process, the sequence in which he resumes comfort to his mothers, his loved ones, his father had already died, and to the loved ones in Ayodhya Puri. And Tulsi Das was very, very careful in describing the steps in which Sri Ram used before settling back into Ayodhya Puri. I take you back 14 years before where the reason or the primary human reason that Sri Ram was sent into the forest for 14 years it was the poisoning of the mind of Kekahi by Mantara. It was the poisoning of her mind that resulted in she, Kekahi, requesting of her husband Dashrat that Ram be sent into the forest for 14 years and her son Bharat be crowned as leader of Ayutthaya. And having accepted that wish or honoring the promise of his father Dashrat, the Lord went to the forest. And look at this episode, this Chopai, that describes who did Sri Ram meet and greet first. Tulsida says, the Lord knew he knew that Kekahi was a shame. Imagine she entertained shame, she entertained remorse. For 14 years, she had to live with a conscience bothering her. And he understood this, Tulsida says, that Kekahi was a shame.